about that. Today, today is going to be elementary. It's going to be elementary in terms of simplistic to understand. Simplistic to understand, but it doesn't mean it's unimportant. Simple doesn't mean unimportant. If those of you have been clued up during this year, during our series, you'll notice that we've been talking, of, of course, about here we grow. Somebody shout, here we grow. Here We Grow has been our serious title because here at the tab, our intention is to make sure it's a gym where we grow and you need to get to the gym as regularly as possible, okay? Just like it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. If you're going to become developed, then you have to be intentional. Physical growth, I've told you already, is incidental. Spiritual internal growth must be, must be intentional. And it's interesting because um, if you've noticed, we've been talking a lot about spirituality. Because fam, I get, I get it, I get it. You want your business to thrive. You, you want your relationship to thrive. And we teach on all of that in this church. And we've taught on all of that stuff in this church for many years. And we'll be picking up our relationship series in uh, February. February is our relationship series. And I can't wait to jump into some stuff with that with you guys. Talking about uh, dating and singleness and marriage and all that kind of stuff. That's in Feb. But right now, none of that's any good if you don't lay the godly foundation. And so, I know it, it kind of gets on some people's nerves, one or two people. Not many, the majority of you are with it. But there's some people who are like, Pastor, when are you going to give me a nugget I can drop in my business? And now, Listen, this, you've got to get the nugget of God first. And so everything, we talked in the first installation about godliness. Then we talked about relationships with people and with God. Okay? Then, then we talked about what you offer. Remember, a lot of the work has been put on us in this series. Becoming godly. Talked about the relationships and what we do to arrange our relationships socially and also how we relate to God. And, and then we're going to talk about W today. And, and these, these are all strange ones. Strange ones because you hardly hear these taught nowadays. And I'm not saying we're, we're suchy muchy and we're super duper. I'm just saying that I think it's important that if we're going to lay a foundation at the beginning of the year, the foundation needs to be about us growing in how we operate internally in our spirituality, how we relate to God. Are we obeying God? Are we trying to do the right thing in terms of God? And then now we can dive into all the other stuff because the foundation's laid. If that makes sense, shout back amen at me. Okay, so, so today, today I want to pick up a... Where am I picking up? I'm picking up in, in an interesting one because uh, as we climb into some of this stuff, I want you to be questioning yourself. By the way, last week, how many of you have done the survey? The self-assessment survey. Self is good, excellent. Love you guys. Phenomenal. Wave your hand. Come on, wave your hand in the air and wave it like you just don't care and all of that. The survey. Go online. Do we still have the survey online, guys? We still got it online? Yes, we do. Okay, so make sure you do the survey. See, that's part of growing. When you walk out of the church, when you leave the gym, when you leave having had the instruction, you've got to get straight to it. Because the enemy of our souls will bring stuff to distract us. Growing has to be, somebody shout, intentional. To know where you are in your relationship with God, alright? So, um, as we climb through this we talk about here we grow and and here's here's where we're talking about we talk about w today let's bring it up w uh and and the w is interesting because it bounces out of bring my next slide up it bounces out of this this text here this text and then the next text and i want you to write these down because i'm going to teach a little bit then we want to wrap it up at the end with some maybe some fun some excitement but but first Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 5 I'm going to read through it slowly and I want the class to stay on track with me stay on track with me guys so watch this now uh, Peter says he writes this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and he says listen listen to the passion please don't miss this listen to the passion in his voice he says praise be my God praise be praise be somebody shout praise be this is a celebration. He says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth. Somebody shout, I'm born again. That's if you're born again. He's given us new birth into a living hope. We've got hope. My God. This is important, guys. Don't miss this now. He says, 
He says we've got hope. We've been given a living hope. Uh, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we have hope. What death thought it conquered. Jesus beat death. My God. He said, and because of that, because of that kind of power, we have hope if we have Jesus. Not just that, that, that we'll beat death, that death is never final for a believer. I, I want to say that again. Death is never final for a believer. But he says this, he says, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Now, that's lovely. Look at the celebration, look at the praise, and here's a key word for you all to note down. Those of you who make notes who are serious about the word of God, notice the appreciation. He opens by saying, praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because in his great mercy, he has given us new birth and into a living hope. We have hope. Now, here's the next part I love, and this is what I want to highlight here. He says, uh, you... Watch this now. Who through faith are shielded, my God. I, I wonder if the church is going to get excited about that. You who through faith are shielded because you have faith in Jesus, because you are of the faith, because you are a believer. You're shielded, protected. That means protected by God's power. Oh, my God. I, I know people only get excited about houses and pay rises and cars now. Anybody glad you're protected? Balcony, if you're glad you're protected, shout back at me. I'm protected. Come on, tell them. Watch this now. Shielded uh, by God's power online, e tribe type, I'm protected. I'm protected until the coming of the salvation. The coming of the salvation. Until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. That's interesting. The coming of the salvation. That means I I've got salvation, but there is also a coming salvation. Oh my God. I don't want to lose you today, but, but you know, it, it really is concerning to me some, some of the things that we miss in the texts. All right, we've read that. Make a note of that. Read it in your own time. Now I want to read another text, and I'm going to marry them together, and they're going to have a baby called The Message. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. is after Jesus rose from the dead. He went through his suffering. He went through all the drama of the cross. And then he dies and he rises three days later. And of course, he hangs out for 40 days. And then he meets with the disciples. And he says to them, he says these words, but you will receive power. Somebody shout power. power. Love that. When the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Oh my God. Is this the slow class? And anybody caught the W yet? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. The last thing Jesus said, oh my God, where's the parents? If you're a parent in here, wave your hand. Okay, you know when you leave the kids at home? <laughs> and before you step out the door, you make sure you leave the most important thing to say to them as the last thing. Now listen, don't open the door to anybody, you know. <laughs> or for some of you, tidy the house. <laughs> But, but, but the last thing is often the most important thing. After they had this big discourse, which you can read about in Acts chapter 1, the last thing he says to them is, listen, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit, that's me in spirit form, because I will not leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you always. You remember he said that? Okay, but he said that when you receive the Holy Spirit, he said what you're going to receive is power. And, and listen, the power will give you confidence, power, dynamism to be my witnesses. Somebody shout witness. Sorry on screen. Witness, witness, witness. Pastor, what's this got to do with grow? You'll find out. Witness, witness. 
this is interesting here, uh, a, a quick definition. There's lots of de definitions. I know we've got a lot of lawyers and barristers and stuff in the church, but, but just a, there, there's a plethora of definitions, but a generic def definition of witness, especially as it relate, relates to a court or a trial or legality, it talks about a person who gives evidence, usually in the form of a testimony based on a first-hand experience. You also have other kinds of witnesses. You've got expert witnesses. An expert witness is if there's a court going, trial going on and they need to call somebody who's maybe a specialist in handwriting or a specialist in a, a DNA to help reinforce the evidence. But here I want us to check this out. Is somebody who gives evidence, usually, let me come out the way so you can take a snapshot of that, who gives evidence, uh, usually in the form of a testimony based on a first-hand experience. Now, now, this is interesting here because every believer of God needs to make sure you are a witness. Oh, my God. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a witness? Are you a witness? Now look back at them and say, are you a silent one? See, it's interesting here. It's interesting because every one of us should have the level of passion for God. We should have the level of zeal for God that your, your relationship with God, one of the signs that your relationship with God is stale is when you don't want to talk about him. Oh my God, pastor, slow down fam. No, full, full speed ahead, seat belts on. It is when, when you've become stale with somebody, you don't talk about them anymore. You don't get excited. Just think about a practical relationship. I'm not excited. I take, take my wife for granted. I take my, my, my husband for granted. And, you know, it's like they're just there, in it? It don't matter. When, when, when you, that's when it's becoming stale. Let alone our relationship with God. When God has said, we just read it, he's called us to be witnesses. Pastor, I ain't heard this kind of preaching in years. I'm no. Nobody wants to talk about being a witness anymore. Everybody wants five steps to better your career. And that's good, that's good. But you need to do what God asks first. Witness, witness. See, see, here's our challenge. Our challenge is this. One of the reasons we, we don't witness is because our passion is depleted. Because really and truly, I've realized if, if, you, if you're going to be a witness, you will not witness if you don't have, watch this now, gratitude. Oh, pastor, you're going to have to work today. I didn't want to have to, but okay. It's interesting because when people lose their gratitude for what God has done, when you get used to God, when you lose your appreciation for all he's accomplished for you, we dip in our passion. And if you don't have passion, you will not be a witness. Oh my God. What, what, what do you mean, Pastor? Hey, here's the trouble. Here's the trouble. Come on, Pastor. Come on now. Tell, tell it like it is. Thank you so much, Pastor Mike. I will do. Here's the issue here. Here's our challenge. See, because we live, most of you in here, we, we, we have a transactional relationship with God. When God has called us not to be transactional, but transformational. Oh my God. Hey, here's how some of you see it. Some of you see it like this, God, I'll keep coming to church so long as you keep doing this, 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 and this. So your coming to church is your payments for his blessing. And if God don't give you the promotion or give you the breakthrough, then you start stopping coming to church. My, my, my passion for praise depletes if he doesn't do because it's a payment system. I come to church and you bless me. If you stop blessing me, I stop coming to church. If you stop blessing me, I stop praising you. If you don't bless me in the way I want, rather than trusting that God always gives you the best thing that you need, sometimes what you, oh my God, sometimes if God gave you your wants, your wants would destroy you. Rather than trusting if I didn't get that job, it's because I was asking for crumbs when God has a loaf. Oh, I wish I had 150 real people in here. Stop doubting when stuff don't go your way. If he's your father and he's a good, good father, then all things work together for the good of those who love God. High five your neighbor and say, it's working for my good. Even when it don't work, it's working for my good. Even when they reject me, it's working for my good. Even when 
my application doesn't get to the right department, it's working for my good. Because I don't just praise God for open doors. I praise him when the door closes. Because rejection is often redirection. Sit down. Let's pretend we're Baptists. Come on now, listen. Understand this. Gratitude. When you lose your gratitude, you lose your passion. And when you lose your passion, you shut your mouth. You won't be a witness. See, see, oh my God, I, I wasn't going to do it, but let me do it. I had it, on my, I had it on my screen. I got it on my screen, but I didn't want to talk about it because I thought some of you could handle it. See, I'm sick and tired. Can I, can, I, can I have a little therapy session in here? My E-Tribe, I love you, but this is past having a little therapy. Lord knows I need therapy sometimes, so watch this now. Here we go. I'm sick and tired of people who only praise God, by the way, for the gravy. See, because a job, a pay rise, I found my boo and I found my bow. That's gravy. The real meat is that I'm saved. I'm no longer judged. I'm no longer in trouble for my own sins. Jesus paid the price for my sins. I'm grateful that I don't go to hell. If I get a car, if I get a house, if I get a boo, if I get a bow, that's gravy, baby. But what I'm glad about is that I'm on my way to heaven and I'm enjoying the trip. Can't preach that no more. Nobody like that. It's good pastor, but that's some pie in the sky. I want my pie right now. Oh, if I could teach you. I teach you about the components. See, some of us, but what I've realized, and I had to back up, I had to back up because I got upset about it. And then when I was thinking about it last, I said, no, no, slow down, slow down. Because many of them don't understand salvation. We hear about salvation, being saved, being born again. I now have salvation. But you don't understand the miraculous, mind-blowing plan of God for salvation. How God set this up so you're covered everywhere you turn. Can I explain it to you? Those of you take the time to read your own Bible, you'll hear, you'll hear, throw it on screen for me. You'll hear sometimes that you are, watch this now, you hear these words, I'm justified. Oh my God. What does that mean, Pastor? That's a technical word. When the Bible in the book of, in the book of Romans talks about you being justified. When you're justified, what that means is, watch this now, I am saved. Saved from what? There's three components to this. Write these down, because I want you to understand, I don't want to lead a dumb church. I want us to know the word. Write these down. When you're reading from scripture and you see these words pop out, they have meaning. They're not just big words mentioned in the text. And if you understand it, then it will reignite your passion. Because God's got you covered. Look at that number one. The first component of your salvation is that you are saved. Somebody shout, I am saved. What am I saved from? Is this a football match? Am I a goalkeeper? What, what? You're saved from the penalty of sin. Oh, pastor. The sin. See, my sins. Let me tell you, you all are acting like you all got your Academy Awards going today. Let me tell you about me. My sins were nasty. My sins were despicable. I couldn't tell some of you my sins. You wouldn't want me to be your pastor. I am saved. When the devil tries to make you feel like God don't love you, tell him I am saved. The word for that means I'm justified. God, God goes from, watch this now, God becomes the chief justice and he pronounces you in the court of sin. He pronounces you not guilty because Jesus pays the price. Oh my God. Church, can I keep going? Balcony, can I keep going? I'm justified. Here's the word. Here's what we say in theology. We say it's just as if I never done nothing wrong. It's just as if I never, I never beat nobody up. It's just as if I never slept with nobody. That's why when they try and bring back your old you, tell them I'm justified. It's just as if. Watch this now. Watch this now. I am saved. Now, what's that talking about? Watch this now. Don't miss this. That's talking about my spirit. Because you are a spirit. The person you're sitting next to, 
is the house the person lives in. The real you is a spirit. And God has justified the real me. I am saved. The moment I believe in Jesus, I accept his payment. And God accepts his payment. And the transaction's done. And it's just as if I'm justified. It's just as if I never did anything. I don't care how many boys you slept with. I don't care how many girls you slept with. I don't care how many people you robbed. I don't care what you did in your past. When the devil tries to raise your past, remind him of his future and tell him to get out your way because you are justified. If this is helping everybody, somebody shout that justified. Second component, watch this now. Watch this now. Please understand, is this how your salvation works? You see this word appear in the scripture, sanctified. Somebody shout sanctified. You read about that in the New Testament as well. As Paul begins to explain how all the components were. Take it off screen for a minute. Take number two off screen. Because I need to say something else. I want your attention. See, because sometimes, though you are, watch this now. Watch this now. Though you are, though you are justified, I'm saved. Let's tell the truth. Can we tell the truth? Tab Church is a real church. We want to keep it 100, okay? The truth be told, sometimes, sometimes some, some old stuff creeps up. Sometimes my mind starts thinking some cray cray. Sometimes I find myself slipping into some trouble. Look at your neighbor and say, he's not talking about me, he's talking about you. Tell him, tell him, tell him. And sometimes I don't feel like I'm really saved. Yeah, no, I'm justified, but I just don't feel like, because, you know, I had this mad thought, and I started thinking about him again, or thinking about her again, and I had a little flashback, and that flashback became a flash forward, and then I tried to stop it, but... God, and, and, we, and we start disqualifying ourselves. Watch this now. And at that point, if you're not careful, come on, Pastor Mike, hurry up now. If, if at that point you're not careful, you'll allow the enemy, because the enemy operates in ignorance. The enemy loves your ignorance. If you don't know the components, you'll think you're disqualified. And so because you don't feel like it, because you had that mad thought or something crazy happened and you made a mistake, you start staying away from God. You stay away from church. You don't want to lift your hands. You want to take a sabbatical because things ain't right. And, and God says, no, 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 I got that covered too. That's number two. Number two, throw it on screen team, come on. Number two is, watch this now, somebody shout, I'm being sanctified. That means I am being saved. What's that referring to? My soulish realm. My emotions, my mind, my, my way of thinking. That all sits in the realm of the soul. My will, my desires. My cray cray. That I'm trying, I'm being saved. That's why the Bible, it's, it's another word for the soul is like the mind. That's where the mind resides. That's why he says you need to be transformed by the renewing it's a process. Somebody shout, it's a process. That's why when they try and judge you, when the enemy tries to make you feel like you need to stay away from God because of something that happened, you need to let him know, I'm being sanctified. That means I'm being saved. Sanctification is a process. Now you need to make sure you're in the process. You need to make sure you're in the process. But don't let, don't let the old thought that crept back up Make you feel like you're now disqualified. You don't stay in it, but you understand the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit's job. That's why everybody needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because his job is to sanctify you. Every time you feel like you're going to punch that guy out, the Holy Spirit says, slow down. Every time you feel like texting that person because it's a Friday night and you're alone and you ain't had nobody with you in years and you get a little hungry and a little thirsty because your libidinous drives are alive and on fire. Your libido, your sex drives that is. And you're about to text that number and the Holy Spirit says, you know you don't need that drama. Oh my God. Is this too heavy guys? Is this too heavy? If I can keep going, I need a loud preach. I'm being sanctified. I'm being sanctified. 
I'm being sanctified. Sanctified is I'm being saved. That's my soul. Saved from what? The power or the control of sin. The power, the control. The, the, you see, see, before I was saved, sin controlled me. If I felt like it, I'm doing it. If you cross me, I'm knocking it out. You push me the wrong direction, I bang you in the face. If she looks sexy, I'm going to try and take her to bed. All of this stuff, all of this stuff, thank you brother. All of this stuff, is this is nice, I like this, this is good, yeah. It's being sanctified brother, the microphone's being sanctified. Sanctified, all of this, all of this is I'm being saved, I'm being saved. I'm being saved. Somebody shout, I'm being saved. What's being saved? My soul, my will, my emotions, my way of thinking. Oh God, is this too much? Watch this here, watch this. So I'm justified, I'm sanctified. Okay, okay. But, but sometimes, sometimes, watch, watch this now. Sometimes my body, my body, my body gets too much temptation or sometimes my body gets sick. And, and if I'm saved, why, why aren't the right things happening physically to me? God, God says, that's, that's the future. That's when I return. Your body will be glorified. Somebody shout glorified. glorified. That, that's my body. That's, that's I shall be saved. That's yet to come. It's happened in transaction, but it's yet to be manifested in position. When Jesus returns and we get a new body, all those pains, there's no more disease can touch you. No more temptation can get to you that's why when he returns the bible says in the king james it talks about we shall be watch this now we shall be changed we, this mortal shall put on immortality that means you can't die oh i wish he see if i just told you, you got the pay rise you'd praise but but this mortal shall put on immortality that means death and sickness won't be able to touch your body anymore that's why when we have our home going services for our saints we celebrate as a graduation Oh, oh, watch this now, my, my, my body, this mortal shall put on immortality. Then it says, this corruption, where, where's my old school church folk? <laughs> shall become incorruptible. In other words, you're, you won't be able to be corrupted because there's no temptation on the inside of you. Somebody shout justified. justified. Shout sanctified. sanctified. Shout glorified. If you knew what salvation really was and now you do, you ought to give God praise that his salvation plan covers all of your issues. That's why every time the devil tries to pull you back, you ought to tell the devil to shut your mouth. I'm giving God glory because I'm saved. If he don't give me another car, I'm still going to praise him. If he don't give me another pay rise, I'm still going to praise him. If he don't give me the husband, if you don't give me the wife, I'm still going to praise him because it's already done enough. I am saved. When you understand this, you become more grateful. You become more grateful. And when you're grateful, see, see, we don't hear this anymore. So nobody's grateful unless God does something for them transactionally. So now I can tell people, you know, God bless me, you know. Oh, my brethren, God bless you, this car, my new Beamer. God bless me. But if he never gave you the new Beamer, you ought to bless God anyway because you're saved. I don't just come to church, let me get my little blessing. No, I come to church because God has already accomplished everything that he needed to accomplish in my life. I've got in. I know, you know. Come on, tell the truth. You know you don't deserve God. But God has paid the price and you are saved. My God, when I praise God, I'm praising God like I'm in a dance because I'm just glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I'm saved. That's why you see me lift my hand. I might not have got the breakthroughs that I wanted that week, but I lift my hand because when I come into the house of God, I remember I'm saved. Anybody remember getting into the club? Remember when you used to rave hard and you get into the club that you know you didn't have to pay to get into? 
you're hiding from the bouncers trying to make sure security don't recognize you but when it's time for the dance when your tune hit you get on that floor and you start dancing because you're glad you made it in I wonder if there's 150 in fact if there's 300 people who will jump up and give God a dance praise because you're glad you made it in he let me into his church High five your neighbor, say, I'm saved. All right, sit down for me, watch this. Watch this now. I feel like having church, but, but, but hold on. Got to finish this because I promise you I won't be long. Watch this here, watch this now. So, so here, here, here's what happens. If there's no gratitude, there's no witness. Because the bridge between gratitude and witness is passion. I won't witness about God if I'm not passionate about God. And I won't be passionate about God if I'm not grateful for what he did. And I won't be grateful if I don't understand. And all that getting, get understanding. <laughs> understanding is what starts motion. Understand this then. So how do I witness them, Pastor? Now you've told me, you've told me about all what God did and I knew I was saved, but you know, I've never heard it like that before. I've, I've seen these words in the Bible, I've read through the New Testament and seen this justified, glorified, sanctified, but now you've put it into these three components. It makes me excited because I'm glad about what God done for me, what God's done for me, what God's done for me. He's done more than I expected. He's been better than good to me. I don't just praise him for gravy anymore. Don't get me wrong, gravy is nice. But I don't just praise him for the gravy. I praise him because of the meat and the veg. What he's actually done for me. He's conquered death. He's beat sin. I've made it in. I'm qualified because of what Jesus did. So, so how do I witness then, Pastor, now? How do I witness? Witnessing must happen in actions and words. Look at that on screen. Actions and words. I'm going to talk about actions first. Why, why is that, Pastor? Watch this now. Please don't miss this. I want to talk about actions first real quick. And these aren't, these aren't hard to understand, but I think it's important that we just slow the car down and think about this. It's the life you're living. Oh, my God. What do you mean? It's the life you're living. See, see you become the only Bible people read. So, so notice he said, watch this now. He said in, in Acts chapter 1, he said, you will receive the Holy Ghost after receiving the Holy Spirit. You will receive power to be my witnesses. So witnessing is about your being. How you be. How I, how I be. How, how I am. It's not just what I say. I'm going to come to that in a minute. But it's how I am. Because it's terrible if you're saying one thing and your life looks the opposite. Oh my gosh, how I am. Here's what often messes up, and I won't spend long on this, but here's what often messes up how I am, how you are. Can we tell the truth again in here, team? You know what often messes us up? Is our lack of control over our emotions. If you trace back nearly every mistake, every error, every slip up, every sin, every offense to God, every destruction, distraction in your life, it tracks itself back more regularly than not to you not having control over your emotions. Oh my God, uh, uh, look, look at this text. It's interesting, uh, in Proverb, look at, look at Proverb. Proverb uh, chapter 15, we read this on Wednesday Night Live, my Wednesday Night Crowd, my Proverb crew, Proverb crew, if you're here, shout back, yeah? yeah. Proverb crew, 31 days in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 16, 32, look at what it says. It says, better a patient person, this is the wisdom book of Proverb, written by Solomon. Better a patient person than a warrior. Better is a patient person than a warrior. One with self-control is better than one who can take a whole city. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hold on, hold on. What's say? A, a, a warrior can conquer a city, but he's not as powerful as somebody who can manage themselves. A patient person isn't just somebody who waits because patience doesn't just speak about waiting. Patience speaks about how you wait. I've seen some people waiting horribly in the post office, in Tesco,
at the takeaway, waiting horribly. But patience is how you wait. Because as Christians, as Christ followers, we are called to live differently from the world. So we are supposed to be managing our emotions. We have emotions, yes, and we don't deny our emotions, but we have a different approach to how we manage them. You see, see, watch this, look what it says. It says, better one with self-control than one who takes a city. Self-control talks about how you control the inside. Oh my God. How you respond to your feelings. Feelings. If I feel upset, one of the worst things you can do is feel, watch this now, angry, and then send, here's what I've heard it put it like this. Hey, I feel angry. I feel angry. And then you send anger a train of thought for anger to climb on to take you in the wrong direction. Anger can only go somewhere if you make it a passenger on a train of thought. Oh my God. One of the problems with some of our young people out on the streets who are taking each other's lives, they don't understand how you can feel upset and then they put it on a train of thought. A bad train. You see, it only, emotions only have power when you give them power. Oh, here's the way I usually put it. See, the problem with many of us is we get manipulated by our moods. Oh my God, can I talk about it like it's real? Look at your neighbor and say, be careful, be careful, be careful. Watch this now. We get manipulated by our moods and then our moods become our master. And when your mood becomes your master, people become your controller. Because then people can put you in the right or the wrong mood and they then have dictation over your life like a despot. Oh God, I wish somebody would understand. If you could learn not to let your mood become your master, why? Because moods come from feelings and feelings are not always facts. But that train of thought now starts carrying you into a dimension that you didn't need to go into. This is hard work. Learning to master your moods. I'm not saying this is easy. That's why you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because he is the one who sanctifies us. He helps train us to be godly. So yes, the guy cut me up and I want to cuss him off. Because he's been tailgating me. He's been up against my back for the whole trip. And I feel like pulling over and saying, and what? <laughs> Pastor Rob, don't admit too much now. Come on, calm down. <laughs> and I go to put the indicator on to say, come then. I'll give you the five-fold ministry. Because I allowed the anger to jump on the train of thought that took me in the wrong direction. Some of you have got on the wrong train. You've allowed a, a feeling to get on the wrong train and the train took you to the maternity ward. You're the slow today, Lord Jesus. And now you're connected for a lifetime with somebody who God didn't tell you to even look at. <laughs> Is this too much for you guys? Is this too much? Every time we don't become a good witness with our actions, it's often because we are allowing our emotions and our feelings and our moods to become our master. And when your mood becomes your master, people become your controller and your king and can direct where your life goes. Because if they put you in the right or the wrong mood, if I'm helping everybody, clap your hands, make it sound like rain. understand this all right all right all right let me jump out of that because we've got to do communion watch this now watch this now what about what about the other one our actions and our somebody shout words, words. somebody shout words. words 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 are important why because words watch this now words mean so much in the kingdom of god 
in the kingdom of God words mean so much. A, a witness, that's what we're used to with witnesses. A witness turns up at the court and they have to use words. They have to give a statement. Oh God. Words, you know, are powerful. Words are powerful. Uh, listen, listen, listen. If you track back, you'll find out that from the very beginning, words have become seeds. Oh God. Words are seeds. Jesus used that example oftentimes. Talks about the sower went out to sow, and when you find out the seed is word. Understand this words become seeds because watch this now, watch this, please don't miss this. Watch this. Conversation is not just about communication, it's about creation. Words can create atmospheres. Words become the seeds of the beginning of something. And sometimes God is expecting you to use your witness statement. To create a seed of faith on the inside of somebody who he wants to become a believer. And if you shut down the opportunity, you've stopped the seed making manifest. My words, uh, uh, Genesis, you understand this. Even a baby. Now watch this now. This is interesting because he said, he said, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes on you. That means after you're born of the Spirit. Once you're born again, you receive power to be witnesses. In other words, if you're not witnessing, we've got to ask, are you really born of the Spirit? It's not just about tongues. Are, are, are you witnessing? That's, that's a sign. That you're born of the spirit. A sign. A sign. Not the initial evidence, but a sign. Is that you are witnessing. Because just like a baby, when a baby's born, we want to hear a sound. We get scared if a baby's born and, and there's nothing coming out of the baby. One of the signs, sometimes back in the traditional days, they used to slap the babies behind. Upset that. Like the baby ain't already upset that you've dragged him from the warmth of the womb. But we want to hear a sound. There needs to be a statement. Your statement becomes the seed that creates an atmosphere that helps somebody find God. And let me say something else to you. Listen, we are used to hearing about witnesses in trials. Where's my legal team? Tri if there's a trial, we want witnesses. There are people who are going through trials that need to hear your witness statement. Oh, you all are, miss oh, you all are missing it today. They're going through a trial of sickness. They're going through a trial of depression. They're going through a trial of divorce. And they need to hear what you've got to say about what you went through so it helps them get through where they're going. They're going through a trial and you're holding back your witness statement. Witness. Somebody shout witness. witness. Nudge your neighbor. Say witness. 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 Watch this here. Uh, uh, watch this. Please don't miss this. Um, let me throw it up on screen. Here, here's the three top reasons. Here's the three top reasons why Christians stop witnessing or don't witness. Watch this now. Which, which one is you? I want you to take one. I want you to take one. See, number one, there's a lack of gratitude. We just talked about that. A lack of gratitude for what God has actually done for you. We covered that earlier where I said gratitude is what births per passion. And then passion is what drives you to witness. But you won't have gratitude if you don't understand. Is, is, it, is it that you didn't understand? You didn't know that God's... When we say you're saved, you didn't realize all that God's done? That you're justified. You're being sanctified. And you will be glorified. Say it with me again. I'm justified. I'm being sanctified. And I will be glorified. Did you not realize all of this? You've just been waiting for the gravy. That's the only time you get passionate is when God does something physical, the gravy stuff, the, the car, the house, the pay rise. That's gravy, baby. Now there's a lot more he's already done. Watch this now. Number two, a feeling of inadequacy in knowledge of the scriptures. Some people are intimidated to talk about their faith, intimidated to talk about uh, what God's done for them because they think they need to have a knowledge, a deep knowledge of the Bible. I'm not really a pastor. I don't really know the Bible like that. Let me tell you something. Watch this now. In the Bible, the word of God, one of the phrases for the word of God is the law. 
No witness has ever required a qualification in the law to give their statement in court. This is the slow crowd, let me come over here. God doesn't require you to have Bible knowledge. That's my job. The worst thing you got is a pastor who don't know the Bible. But he don't expect you to know all the scriptures. Your witness statement is your testimony. It's your story about what God's done for you. Nobody can argue with that. You know what's fascinating? God in the world today is on trial. Does he exist? Is he really there? And the problem is there's not enough witnesses to bring forth their witness statement. See, because here's the funny thing about court. Can we talk about this for a minute? The funny thing about court is this. The court considers your testimony evidence, even though nobody in the court was there with you. I'm coming back over here. But yet it's still considered evidence because nobody can argue with what you've experienced. Oh, I can't explain to you about theophanies. I can't explain to you about, about trichotomies. I can't explain to you about pneumatology. I can't explain to you about soteriology. But what I can tell you is that I was going through some drama and I prayed and God brought me through. So that's all I can give you, fam. And I know God is real. All God wants you to do is give your story. This is how important it is. See, when you've got gratitude, before I even get to number three, when you've got, let me throw this off screen, gratitude, go to Mark chapter nine. Look at this story. Look at this story if you've got it. Do you have it? You've got Mark, Mark chapter nine. Look at this if you can throw it up on screen. It's interesting how uh, in, in Mark, uh, the story of, of the, the man, anybody remember the man who was possessed with demons and he lived in the tombs? You remember that? He's possessed with demons and he lives in the tombs. And what's fascinating to me is this. Jesus says to this guy, after the guy gets delivered, after the guy gets, uh, the demons are exercised out of him. Jesus says to the guy, the guy comes running to you and says, Jesus, I want to follow you. I'm so hungry, I want to follow you. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. You don't follow me. Go and tell, go and tell. Go home and tell. He's so full of gratitude, he obeys Jesus and the Bible says he goes home and starts telling. When you've got real gratitude what God's done for you, you will go and tell. You will go and say something. Understand this here. Some of us, it's gratitude. Some of us, it's an inadequacy of knowing scripture. And God says, I don't care about your knowledge of scripture. I care about your knowledge of what I've done for you. If there's anybody in here who has a story, hold on. If you have a story and you know what God, I'm not going to call you on stage, don't worry, don't panic. But if you have a story and you know what God's done in your life that can only, it's one of those, it had to be God. Wave your hand in here, just wave your hand. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at all these hands. Well, God says that's your witness statement. Nobody can argue with that and somebody needs to hear about it because of the trial they're going through and somebody needs to hear about it because they've been questioning whether God is real and you need to give them your witness statement. Today I come like an employee of the legal court of heaven to summons you to the court. Come on, put it back up on screen. So number one, it's what? Number one, it's talking about people who, people who want, come on. Lack of gratitude. Number two, feeling of inadequacy. I don't know enough about the Bible. Number three is I'm embarrassed and or afraid of being open about your faith in person, in the person and principles of Jesus. I mean, are you embarrassed? Is, is that what it is? Now, I, I kind of get it though, because this is the culture that's the cancel culture. And don't think that's not strategically introduced by the devil. 
to shut people down from saying what they believe. Because you can say it in a way, now please, by the way, by the, when I say witnessing, I'm not talking about weird witnesses. God ain't called nobody to walk around with no sandwich board on their back. The, cl- the placards, you are going to hell on one side, on the back side, hell is hot. And you're just walking around like this, thinking that you're witnessing. That's not witnessing. Jesus didn't do that. The apostle Paul didn't do that. You look for opportunities to introduce your faith. God bless those sandwich board people. I know they mean well, some of them. Some of them are just angry and they want to send everybody to hell. But understand this, understand this. Please, please don't miss this. I understand it because the culture we have now is created to try and get you to shut your mouth. But here's how God overrides the culture. God will send into your story, your journey, your life, your day, somebody who you'll have a conversation with. And if you're a spiritual person, you will be looking for a gate in what they state. I wish, I wish, wish you'd understand me here. You're looking for a gate, an opening in what they say. So in, in the, as they talk to you, you're hearing that they actually need God or they need to hear my witness statement. My witness statement about how God is real or my witness statement about what I went through and take that opportunity, your family, your friends, a work colleague, as you're eating lunch in the harvester, the slug and lettuce, you and them sitting down at the bar having a quick drink at lunchtime. That still exists, right? Slug and lettuce, I don't know. <clears throat> trying to be relevant here, but. And you're listening for a gate in what they state. They state that they're going for a divorce and it's just driving them crazy and they're having panic attacks at night and anxiety and they can't cope, it's stressing them out and they're just feeling like life's just not worth living and there's a gate. But some of you are so busy ordering your extra portion of chips. You miss the gate that God arranged There's a gate, there's a gate, there's a gate. Hey, listen, 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 life is worth living. Don't worry, listen, I went through some trauma too. I, I, I went through a divorce too. Or I, I went through a loss too, because divorce is a loss. And, and, and grief hits us all. But guess what? My faith, for some reason, God, God climbed over all of that drama and into my spirit and gave me a peace that's kept me sane to this day. I, 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 you know, listen, I know, I know it sounds weird, bro. Listen, listen, I know it sounds weird. Kelly, Kaf, Sue, Keith, Stu, I know it sounds weird. You might not even believe, but trust me, God is real. Do you know what? Before we're going to have a cheeky Nando's, let's have a cheeky prayer. Can we keep it 100 in the church? Yeah. You handled the gate well. Because some people kick the gate. God ain't called you to walk into the office with a Bible and slap it on your boss's desk. <laughs> Push your neighbor hard and say, look for the gate. Look for the gate. Push the other neighbor and say, open it well. Open it well. But, but those of you who are embarrassed, not because of the culture, but just because you're just embarrassed of your faith, you keep it secret. Be careful. Jesus told us about you. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 10, 28. He says, do not be afraid of those. Don't be afraid of the world who can only trouble your body. They can only deal with something with you physically, but cannot deal with your soul. Verse 32 Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever diso- this is so, so inconvenient, Jesus. Did you have to include this? <laughs> but whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Jesus is saying, after all I've done for you, 
And, and you don't want to be seen with me. You're, you're, that, you're that embarrassed by me. Have any of those people died for you? Did any of those people help you through your health crisis, help you through your mental crisis, help you through your financial crisis? Did any, all those people you're trying to impress who don't like you anyway, and I'm the one who's loved you even when you turned your back on me, and you're embarrassed by me. Let that never be said of us. I know preachers don't preach now because you don't get likes. You'll never get a story out of you. You'll never get a tweet. There's no sound bite. There's no preach pastor because this is inconvenient. Jesus, quite frankly, I'd rather you had not have said this. So I don't need to feel as guilty. But understand this here. God is calling us to grow in our gratitude. Because when you grow in your gratitude, you will witness. Now, don't be like most church people. We had evidence of that earlier when I said, how many of you have done the assessment? And 25% of you nodded like you're in an auction. <laughs> because many of you walked out of the service last week having been blessed and given instruction through the word of God but yet you have not been intentional about not just being hearers of the word, but being doers. And I told you, if we're going to grow this year, fam, then we can't just be incidental. We've got to be intentional. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say that before the end of this day, I prophesy that God is going to put somebody in your heart that you know has already shown you a gate. It's a family member. It's the cousin who's just come out of prison. It's the, it's the, it's the uncle. It's the friend who you know is going through trauma. And you've been talking to them, but you've been missing the gate. And God's going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, because God's going to ask you to, to, to open the gate and I'm going to ask you, when God puts that person on your heart, and some of you right now, it, it just hit you. I, I'm going to ask you to pray and ask God to give you another gate. That gate might happen for a phone conversation. It might happen, you might bump into them. You might pop around to grandma's house and bump, bump into them over the dinner table and then take them aside afterwards and have a conversation and look for the gate because there are too many people who need your witness statement. They need your witness statement because it will give them encouragement for what they're going through. But most importantly, they need your witness statement because it will let them know God is real and draw them closer to him. Every day, every one of us as Christians needs to be looking for more points. More points, more points, more points. What do you mean by points, Pastor? What's this? Come competition. No, it's not competition. It's points. When I say points, I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about points. How many of us are looking for opportunities to point somebody to Jesus? To point somebody in the right direction. To point somebody to hope. To point somebody to you can make it through. To point somebody to understanding that I made it through. And if I made it through because of God, you can make it too. When you start with this, you're showing you're growing. Oh, have we gone quiet? We've gone quiet. Because I think we all realize... We've missed some gates. And was heaven relying on us to help somebody through? I don't want to be responsible for somebody's calamity because I missed the gate in what they state. Witness. Witness. If I'm really growing in my appreciation for what God has done for me, I will witness. Let's take a moment. As strange as this might be, you watching online, just take a moment and let's do a prayer together as we wrap this up. Father, there's somebody who needs my witness statement. 
you want me to witness of your existence. You want me to witness and tell what you've done for me for the two reasons. Number one, I will mention because it will help somebody through. But number two, and most importantly, is because it will bring glory to you, more fame to your name. And let somebody know that they too can experience the amazing thing that I've got, which is a relationship with my God and my Creator. Now I'm nearly finished, but I want you just to whisper your own prayer. Whisper your own prayer. Whisper your own prayer. Everybody, balcony to the floor. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Yes, God. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Now, 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 what, what I love, what I love is what we read earlier as we finish this. What we read earlier. Because what we read earlier, some of you have forgotten. What we read earlier is the fact that God said, you're protected. Especially as you start growing in the faith. See, uh, I found out that in this country, there are at least 3,000 people in what's called the Witness Protection Program. <laughs> a witness protection, witness protection, you've heard of the Witness Protection Program in America because of the media and Hollywood, but we have a witness protection system here. The National Crime Agency runs the witness protection. 3,000 people in witness protection. We spend upwards of 20 million a year looking after those in the witness protection. And they're in witness protection because they have a valuable testimony. And it's so valuable that the enemies, those who don't want them to say anything, try and attack them to shut it down. And so the government system puts them under witness protection. And I come to let you know that the moment you start raising the value of your testimony, your protection goes to a new level. Oh, I wish I had 150 of you would understand. Witness protection. Witness, tell them I'm under witness protection. Some of you, God's got you covered because you've been telling people about Jesus. Some of you, God's got you covered and God's got you protected because you are willing to be up front and let people know I'm a Christian and if you ain't with that, then you can go. Witness protection program. What happens in the witness protection program? They change your identity. I, I'm no longer in darkness. I'm now in the marvelous light. In the witness protection program, they relocate you. Oh God, my, I wish I had somebody who understood this. They relocate you. In other words, I'm no, longer, I'm no longer just an earthly citizen, but I've got citizenship in heaven. But they also provide for your needs. I wish somebody would understand that the moment you begin to witness, God don't just let that fly by. You become somebody who comes under his witness protection program. And somebody in here, you need to raise the value of your testimony so that when the enemy comes against your life, he can't get close to you because you carry something that needs to be said that's too valuable. <laughs> Lean on your neighbor and say, witness protected, witness protected. Point to your say, I say, I'm protected. I want us to recognize that because God covers people who have a strong testimony. When they tried to defeat and beat Paul, when they tried to shut him down, and yet God kept making ways of escape, it's because he had a testimony. Let's not go quiet on God this year. Stand with me, everybody. Would you wave your hand at me? Do, me? do me a favor. Wave your hand at me if you've ever heard this teaching in church before. I can see five hands. Maybe we're not getting the response from heaven on the earth in the church world because we're not doing what God wants. We're so busy wanting God to fulfill our wants. And yet we say, watch this, you know what makes me laugh? We say we have a relationship with God. Church, you all still here? We say we have a relationship. In a relationship, there's reciprocity. What we actually have is a dictatorship with God. You ain't got no relationship, fam. You've got a dictatorship. God needs to do what I want and that's it. What about what he wants? 
Relationships always work better when we have a reciprocity going on. Now, we've come to the end of our 21 days of prayer with fasting. And yes, the Lord knows we are going to eat. What you're going to find, what you're going to find, those of you who've been doing this properly, this 21 days properly, even if you've been doing it for a week actually, you'll find this. If you're doing it right, because remember, it's not just about not eating. I'm also not watching enough episodes of Ozark. I'm not watching all of Shonda's movies. The only Shonda I'm doing is Shonda Makanda. No Shonda rhymes. Okay. <laughs> I'm pushing back the normal things that feed really stuff my mind, to be quite honest, doesn't need. Certain programs. Certain, maybe certain phone calls I don't even need to be taking. But some things I'm trying to push back on. I've been doing it for 21 days. You know what you'll find? If you've been doing this right, you will find that when you go back now to start watching the whole Netflix series, there are moments in some of those shows that will feel strange to you. There are things that will be said that your spirit now become, because you've cleansed your spirit. It's like when you go on a proper diet and you cut out sugar. And you used to pre-diet take two sugars. Oh, that my brother, my, one of my brothers used to take six. Is it Dave? Was it Dave? It was six, six sugars he used to take, isn't it? Dave used to take six, six sugars. You'll pray for Dave. But, <laughs> but when he was young. But, um, but then you, you've been on a diet, you, you didn't take anything. And then all of a sudden, you, you drink, somebody brings you a cup of tea who didn't know you was on a diet and they know you normally take two sugars at work. And they give it to you and now it, it's like, you pull back. Before what you used to just lovely, now you pull back from and you're going to find that in your spirit. And I'm saying that to say, don't just dive into all negativity. Some stuff don't need to return to your life. Oh, they didn't like that one, Pastor. Let this mark a change, a shift a difference let this year's fasting and prayer those of you who've been in the church a long time let it mark a shift now lean on your neighbor and say something's got to change we're going to break our fast I'm not saying you can't watch your programs and enjoy life and eat your food I'm going to eat some food trust me like trust trust me but but what we want to do is make sure that we do things responsibly if you've been some of you have been doing a protracted fast each week and then breaking it at the end of each week some of you protracted as in going in like nothing just water some of you have been doing six till six some of you have been doing six till three some of you have been doing a Daniel fast everybody's been doing their thing but, but you've been training your will to say no and this year I pray that you will not be derailed by distractions I pray that you will have God in your goals in the name of Jesus. As we get ready, uh, you're going to come round. How are we going to do this? They're going to march. Okay, you're going to come round. You'll begin to direct people so they can get come and take your, your um, uh, paraphernalia, your emblem with the uh, wine and the uh, wafer and go back to your seat don't don't eat it yet don't drink it yet we're going to do it together as one but just follow the the hosts our host team they're going to direct you walk as quickly as you can uh you can bring some up to the balcony let's let everybody get it and then we're going to wrap this up together guys i love you church i love you guys i know that was random but sometimes you have to just be random innit? You know what I mean? Let's just grab and go. Let's grab and go. And receive an anointing as you come past as well. Just uh, We did this on Friday. Friday night prayers was fire. My Lord. Friday night prayer was fire, fire, fire. We felt the power of God. The Holy Spirit, the window. We were in the room and the wind, those of you were there, you remember the wind of the Holy Spirit just came through. And started hitting people. We had, we had a supernatural time on Friday night. That was Friday night fire. My God. We got to, that's, got to, that's got to be a stayer. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Friday night fire. That's a keeper. 
as you receive your emblem, uh, receive it and just go straight back to your seat and then wait as we all receive it and then take it together. It's like manners. This is what Paul told them to do. You remember, I remember back in the polite days, you had to, you know, you go out for dinner with friends and the waiter brings your dish. You're not supposed to eat until everybody's got theirs. Them days are gone, boy. But Paul said, this is how we're supposed to do it. We should wait for each other. That's what the Apostle Paul taught in the New Testament as well. If you're a believer, if you are a believer, especially a baptized believer, that means you're part of the body of Christ, part of the bride of Christ. And those are the, the people who are supposed to receive the communion. If you're a visitor and you're not even sure if you believe, you can just observe and, and, and see how seriously we take this. How seriously we take this. today God some of us been praying Any, was anybody praying and asking God to help them with a particular situation this year if that was you shout back me yeah we need him this year we need him we need him this year but we want to do his will as well I want to do his will anybody after hearing this series so far want to do what he's asking us to do come on let's lift our hands and tell him watching us on tab at home come on if that's your prophecy this year tell him I want to go wherever you say, to say the word, and I'll obey. I want to live a life that's real. I want to serve you, Lord, for real. For you deserve all this and more. So I give you more.
on church, lift your hands and tell him. From your heart to his throne room. Tell him. Yes, God, you are. I want to give my best to you. Come on. That's a whole prayer, church. That's a whole prayer. Lift your hands and let's sing it with the team another time. Let's go. Everybody sing. I want to give.
Justified, sanctified, glorified. You're gonna overtake her. Go around, go around. Don't have to wait. I give you more. Let mom go around the side. Together, those of you my e tribe at home, get your emblems ready as we lift them to to God. Lift them to God, and we bless them by saying, "Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for these 21 days of prayer with fasting. I thank you for hearing our prayers. I thank you that everybody in the house, from the platform to the door, from the ceiling to the floor, I pray that your presence, Lord." be carried with us throughout the rest of this year. I pray for your blessing in February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and that Lord God, no weapon formed against us will prosper. I pray that you'll begin to answer prayers even this week. Let us begin to see the harbinger, the first fruits of the results of our prayers. Show up and show off. Show up and show off. Show up in every situation and show off your power. I thank you, Lord, for the bread symbolizing this wafer we're about to receive, which represents your body that was broken for us. I thank you for the fruit of the vine in the form of this juice that represents your blood that was shed for us. I thank you for salvation that was accomplished. Salvation. I'm justified. I'm being sanctified and I will be glorified. Somebody shout justify. Somebody shout sanctify. Somebody shout glorify. In Jesus name, forgive us of all unrighteousness and let this moment mark a fresh start as we make a pledge today that we are gonna give you more. In Jesus' name, receive the body of Christ broken in the form of the wafer. Before you receive the blood of Christ, whisper your own prayer to God of thanksgiving, forgiveness, and blessing. Everybody whisper your own personal prayer. Thank you, Father. We know there may be storms to come. We 
may that we know there may be challenges that we need to overcome but I pray that the blood of Christ covers us in the same way that the blood of the lamb covered your children of Israel in Egypt when evil and negativity and the death angel was hovering around those homes that were covered with your blood the storm the death angel had to pass over he couldn't go in he had to pass over in Jesus name let this blood we receive symbolize in this truth mark a Passover moment in Jesus name receive the blood of Christ shed for your sins And now, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these 21 days. And as we break our fast, Father, I pray that, Lord, we will begin to see you in a whole fresh way. I pray, Lord, that people who have not been able to sleep at night, that insomnia will leave them and stress will be cast out in the name of Jesus. And I pray and ask you, God, to set us on a path where we can witness. Help us, as we heard today, to look for the gate in what they stay. We've talked about godliness. We've talked about relationships. We've talked about what we offer. And today we talked about witness. And Father God, I pray that we will all, if we're serious, if, if, if we're serious, that we'll go back over what we've heard over the previous weeks. Let's go online, let's go onto YouTube and let's really let the word of God soak into our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say the fast is over. The fast is over. Look back at them and say get ready for great breakthrough. Get ready, get ready, get ready for, for breakthrough and blessing. Listen. Listen, I'm going to dismiss you, but before I do, yeah, you all don't play that, man. That will mess me up. You all, you all going to mess me up today. I'm trying to let the church go. <laughs> if there's somebody in the room today and you have no church home, if you have no church home, you need a church home where you get the nutrients of the Word of God to help you every single week where you're able to be washed with the water of the word then today I'd like to invite you to make the tab your church home if you don't even know Jesus yet you're not in a proper relationship with him or you know you need to be baptized make the appointment today come to the front as soon as I dismiss come to the front talk to the team or go to the welcome desk out the back and register for the baptisms but for the rest of you <laughs> may God bless you may heaven smile on you Father take us home safely take us home protected if at home you're wondering why I'm laughing it's because the church keeps singing and I'm trying to get them to go home <laughs> God is God is my Hey, I was really into that. You was in, you was in, you was in, you was in. Been past the gay bus, dropped us the W. W. Okay. Witness. Witness. I didn't even see it coming. Wow. I didn't see it coming really. Nah, I, I Carly, thinking, what did you think? I was thinking it was going to be like a win or something like that. You said like win. Witness. Win would have worked. Win like, would have worked. Obviously, where the end and all that. What did you think? Witness was amazing. Yeah. I feel like when he said, do not be controlled by your moods, don't let your moods control you. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? That really hit home because it's yeah. so easy to allow your, your fleeting feeling to take control and make yeah. you do things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, so. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh God, it's good. What about I you? Mean, the whole thing, the whole thing was awesome for me. I really liked how Pastor broke down what our witness statement really means. Mm. I've always been a firm believer that, especially in today's generation, yeah. that your witnessing, your testimony, Come can on. actually be more powerful than any scripture that you Come can on. remember or anything like Come that. On. Because 
our generation always wants to qualify people. So it's like, what gives you the right to be able to tell me about that I can make it through the situation? I want to hear about right. what you've been through right. that can help me get to where I'm going right. to. Do you know what I'm saying? The way how he put it as well, there's people that are uh, in trials yes. that need you as a witness. That was really deep for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. And you could be blocking someone else from their deliverance, from their healing, from their blessings. Yes. So don't be so selfish with the message. Don't miss out. Don't be selfish with the word. Like, That's right. Send it out. Send it out. Because it's good news, people. That's right. That's right. They're telling people good news, you know? And the, and the reality of it is, is nobody really knows what your story can be for someone else. Right. And I feel like God takes us through certain situations so that we can then go on and bless others with it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like God's, God's a generational God. He Come doesn't on. just stop with you. You've got to be able to take your situations uh, and, and remember them and remember what God's done. Right. Keep a diary log of Come it. Come on. Oh, I mean? Speaking of diary. We've got some dates for your diary. Oh, we, we do. do. We Absolutely. have great dates for your diary. Yeah. So, guys, we have Ace for all the volunteers. Volunteers. That is Saturday the 29th. The 29th. The 29th. That's right. Make sure that you're here for 9.30. That's volunteers only. Come okay. On. Another date, a key date, is our first worship night. Well, not our first, sorry. No, I'm but already, the first Sunday. The first the Sunday. Sunday, yeah. In Feb, the first worship Sunday night. is worship night. The first Sunday in February, okay? Now, obviously, we know that things happen and all that, but like our pastor always talks about, we want to ring fence that first, right. all right? And make sure that you're going to be in the house with us. Yeah? Right. It's going to be amazing. Pastor announced we're going to have the first baptisms. Come on. First Come baptisms on. in our new building, guys. If you haven't been baptized yet, now would be an amazing time. Go on and sign up. Sign, sign up. Sign up. Sign up. Come in, come down, see us. We'd love to see you get baptized as well. It'd be amazing. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm looking forward to that worship That's night. Gonna be, um, it's going to be fire. It's going to be fire. It's going to be fire. It's gonna be fire. And then the pastor said that he might, you know, do the first 10. He said the first 10. Ooh. Like, I Are you know. in that 10? Are you in that 10? Do you know what I mean? It's something to look forward to, really. Look, so, guys, as you can see, we're live. We can get baptized. We're live. So, yeah. And people just. Uh, people are already walking yeah, through. Yeah, it's all cool. It's all right. It's all right. Let's try and grab some people. I really want to hear from the people. Colin, who can you get? Who can you get? Who can we pull over today? Who can we see? Anyone, I know who I can get, I know who I can get. Do you know what it oh. is? My brother in the orange, yes! This guy. Orange this guy. jumpers gleaming! How you doing? Come pull on! Down, pull, pull down your mask for us, just want to just ask some questions. Oi, yes, what's your what's name? What's your name first of all? Jermaine. Jermaine, Jermaine, lovely to speak to you Jermaine. What are your takeaways, your key takeaways from today's service? The importance of witnessing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really, really important. Absolutely. Um, because we have to find opportunities to do it. Mm. Um, Pastor says something about it's not just about slapping the Bible down on your boss's desk. It's That's about right. finding opportunities, finding those witness, finding those windows, mm -hmm. but also appreciating the fact that we are saved. Absolutely. That's enough in itself. Come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've got all this stuff, and it all looks nice, but salvation is the most important thing and that's what we're thankful for that's absolutely what i got absolutely absolutely have you been on the 21 days uh fasting with us and and doing that as well the 21 days of fasting that's not a problem that's fine at all how have you found that it's uh what have you taken from that like how's it been for you it's, it's been really good to see, see the the proverbs and the wisdom that comes out of it it's just so good. Amazing. I just love the Proverbs because it's just so like self-contained. Yes, you can just get Come one on. verse. Yeah. Yeah. You get so much from that one verse. I just yeah. love it. Oh. Okay, amazing, amazing. Well, listen, Jermaine, thank you for joining us, man. We We're going to see you next week. week? Pardon? We'll be seeing you next week. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. All right. Wicked. Amazing, amazing. Who I think we had one more. Today? I think we had one more. Ah, oh, is it? Ah, oh, lovely lady here. Hi, hello, hi, hi. hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you? What's your name? Rebecca. How are you feeling today, Rebecca? I'm good today. I just registered to be baptized. Amazing, yeah. fam. I wish I could just <laughs> just get a, get a, get on that. That's amazing. Wait, That's great to hear. Yeah. Come on, it's good. It's the best decision you will ever make in your life. It's been work in progress. I've been getting there. My daughter, I just had a daughter. I'm gonna baptize her. Oh, amazing. So. Amazing. And in the new building as well, like you're going to be among the first people. Like that's history. So obviously when the new being one among the first to be baptized, so that's a great thing. Exactly, exactly. You're not doing anything in halves, are you? No. <laughs> How did you find today's service? Oh, it's good. Yeah, really, really good. Really good. I haven't been for a few weeks because the baby, I'm really nervous, but no, it was inter interesting. It's a blessing that you came out today and even though you're nervous because you've got a new newborn, you came. I come out, they talk about the baptism and I managed to get it involved, so yeah, I'm happy. It's a witness, you hear that? She's witnessing. <laughs> what would you like to tell the people out there? Witnessing. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. You okay, have a cool. good Sunday. You too. Yeah? Me too. See, okay. Next week, we'll be out there looking for you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll be there supporting you on, cheering you on when you're getting baptized. Oh, lovely. Matching jacket. Oh, <laughs> look at me getting picked up, guys. Sorry, but this is live. <laughs> Sorry. See you later, my love.
But that's oh. it. That's the impact the service can have. I mean, I love hearing about people that are about to get baptized. Same, same. It's such an amazing decision. And I mean, from two people that have been baptized, it's something that you just can't, you won't regret. Let me tell you something. You won't regret the feeling that never you have after. Back. I think we had another one. Did we have another one? Yeah, is they ran away. We had another one. Did they run away? They ran away. Fam, I will chase people. They I've got one more. Why are you running away? Why are you running? We're going to get the camera to pan Why to someone. Why are you, you in running? A minute. We're gonna get, come on, come on, come mum. On. You might as well. You might, you might as you well, know, no? You might as well talk okay. to each other, Nick, because people don't want to talk to us today. Fam, do you know what? Today's and message just really hit really me. It really hit me. It really hit me, I think. Because the, the key thing is obviously, you know, us that have grown up in church, you've got churchy words like evangelism yeah. and stuff like that. That can sometimes seem a little bit intimidating. Witness. And all it really is, is just that. It's Hold just up. hearing your witness, it's your witness statement. Witness. Just hearing what God has done for you. Pastor made such an amazing point um, when he was talking about, like, look, nobody can argue with your witness statement. Do you know what I mean? It's no one personal. Of us can, I don't know all of the Bible. I can't always draw for every single scripture. But when I can tell you my Come testimony on. of what God has done for me, it's personal. No one can argue. It's, it's personal. personal. Exactly that. It's exactly personal, that. but it's beneficial. That's you right. know, God That's is right. so good. And Nick, you know, it's been such a great Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you know, I cannot wait to see what God has in store for the Tab family, everyone watching online. And the key you thing, know. it's January. It's just the beginning. It's only the beginning it's of the, beginning, the year, guys. okay? It's Listen, our church is always working. Our church is always moving forward. We've got so many things happening. Guys, as much as we love to see you in the comments and all yes. of this stuff, yes. come out, join us. Do you know what I mean? This Christ walk was never meant to be something that you walk alone. Come on. Come meet some people, talk to us. Come Maybe we'll try love. and grab you come for an interview. Love. Oh, we've got one. We've got another one. Did we've got we? another one. Yeah, amazing. Oh. Amazing. Come on, Ma. Cause I was about to sign so, out. Yeah, and she's got a, she's got a nice coat on as well. Yeah. Really nice yeah. And you look lovely you today, look by lovely. the way. You I look see amazing. the anointing. Don't be scared. Don't the be scared. Come over to the middle. Amazing, amazing. Can you just start by telling everyone what your name is? My name is Carmen. Carmen, how are you doing? You okay? You feeling good today? What did you think of today's service? What were your key takeaways? My key takeaway was um, the witness. And also important of sharing your story, sharing, you know, witness to others about your words, what you've learned. Um, the whole service itself was really excellent and it's also a refresher because I've been coming for a long time. So it's yeah. good to sort of come back and to actually um, re hear the words from pastor to reinforce mm. our life, how we're living and also others around you. Yeah. And that's the key thing. Sometimes right. you do, you go away from life happens. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not things happen and it you know you get taken away your work pulls you from different directions but it's when you come back reset oh, yourself come and back what home. a Sunday to come back because it was a great word do you know what I mean yeah. amazing exactly well, thank that thank you for stopping by I was just going to say that we've got the rival lounge coming up we do oh I mean yeah. you might as well talk to the people about yeah. it tell them about it yeah the, um, the rival lounge coming up at the um, 28th of February um, that should be announced soon and it's for new members who's joined the tab and want to get to know more about the tab on a smaller scale. So listen out for the announcement. I just got to ask oh, you one thing, because this is a key thing that people love to hear. So, so just, just so that we can put it here on record, on. how much does it cost to go to the Arrivals Lounge? It's free. What? Sorry. How much does it cost to go to the Arrivals Lounge? Nothing. Free. Right. So there's no excuses. No excuses. Make free. sure you come out and join us. Carmen, thank you for Carmen, your time. Wait, wait, Carmen, oh. thank you for doing our job. Because oh, yeah. We definitely left that out. Oh yeah, 100%. So, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, that thank we, we you. might keep our jobs for another week. Yeah, please. That's thank amazing. You. Thank you, Carmen. <laughs> That's amazing. Look well, up. guys, it's been great. It's been an amazing Sunday. It's been we hope great. to see you next week. We've got yeah. the last Sunday of the month. Come on. Fam, it's Jan it's January. To be it's lit. the last Sunday of the month next week. It's about to go. Home. Okay. Oh, we just what is that we doing? Is that we doing? All right. Let's just say bye to people. Say we can, bye. Okay, we'll say bye to people. Guys, it's been amazing. Have an amazing week. We'll see you next week for another episode of Tab at Home. We sure will. See you then. See ya. Are we still going to dance? Yeah. Why are we doing the before we leave you today, we wanted to take time to say a special thank you to those loyal Tab Church members who have continued with your financial contributions, ensuring that your church, the Tab London, continues its vision and mission. To those partners and friends around the world who have been enjoying the Tab at Home service and you have asked how you can contribute financially, please remember you can support the ministry simply by giving via the Tab Church app, the website or indeed via text. Thank you for your continued support. God bless you. Be the rock and let the God of my salvation be